So I'm since we're at two, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining our Summer Fundraising Strategies and Ideas webinar. My name is Lisa Galbrin and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause. Uh, and I'm so excited to talk about summer fundraising and what you can do with it. Uh, before we um, begin, just a couple of in-house things. Um, so if you have a question throughout the webinar, I will try to stop and answer questions. There's also a dedicated time at the end for any questions. Please use the uh, question and answers tool in your Zoom panel. Um, that way I can make sure that I see them and they don't go missing in the chat. Um, so again, I'll try to answer as many questions through, throughout, but at the end, we'll also dedicate some time. Um, I see more people joining in. Please feel free if you're joining in right now, just introduce yourself within the chat, your name, your organization, where you're coming from. Um, I see we have organizations from across uh, the country. So that's so great to hear uh, and see a lot of different perspectives. All right, so just a little bit about Mighty Cause for those of you who are maybe not as familiar with Mighty Cause. Uh, we've been around since 2006. So we've been in the nonprofit fundraising space for a long time. Um, we're a year round fundraising platform. We provide tools that allow you to fundraise the easiest and best way possible. Um, so we're an all-in-one platform and we provide tools um, for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising integration so that you can automate some of your tasks more easily, analytics, reporting, such as donate, donor retention reporting, um, embeddable forms, text to give, etc. So we offer a bunch of things. If you're interested, uh, there will be a survey at the very end. If you're interested in learning more, um, you can let us know if you uh, would like a demo or you can access this link as well. Um, and as well, just to know, uh, this slide deck and uh, webinar will be emailed out after the webinar in an email. So you'll all have access to the slide deck and a recording. All right, so let's get into the agenda. So uh, we're going to be going over just some general information about summer fundraising first, some basic information. We're also gonna be talking about different fundraising types, um, some fundraising ideas, and also alternatives to fundraising um, that you can do in the summer as well. So a little bit about summer fundraising. So um, summer fundraising really constitutes between June and September. Technically, uh, summer this year starts June 20th and ends September 22nd, which is a little bit later than you might imagine, um, but it's that time frame of June to September. Now, historically, summer has always been known as a slower season for fundraising. Um, it's usually a time period where a lot of nonprofits take this opportunity to take a break and regroup, um, look at you know their data information, plan for fall, which is all great. Um, however, it's still an opportunity to fundraise. And why is that? So uh, I found this interesting. Um, so in the Institute of Black Thought, uh 2002 report, uh, they found that actually June was one of the biggest giving months in the year, which I think, I, at least I was surprised to see that because um, I think hopefully we all can agree, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is really the first three fall months, which they are. But June is also a really strong month. And a couple of the reasons why is one, it is the start of summer. So um, people are in better spirits. Uh, people are ready to relax, recharge. It's also the end of the fiscal year. So there are um, end of fiscal year fundraising campaigns. And as well, it's the end of school term. So some people, some families have more availability. Families can participate in activities. Um, there's a lot more freedom um, in terms of summer and also just being outside. Which goes into, so outside of just the statistics of June is a great month to fundraise. Why is summer a good time to fundraise? So 
one, it's an opportunity for you to be creative and test the waters out for a fundraising campaign that maybe you were interested in doing, but you weren't sure if you want to test it out or gamble on it for Giving Tuesday or the fall. And the warm weather also allows you to hold a lot of outdoor events, which we'll talk a little bit about um, when we go into fundraising ideas. And a lot of these outdoor events also can help um, with costs, it doesn't have to cost. It doesn't have to be um, an extremely, you know, it doesn't have to be a costly event or a fundraising campaign that you host, um, especially with the nice weather. As I just mentioned, it's also a opportunity for an entire family to really participate. Summer break for um, kids gives nonprofits the chance to really entice families to participate in their campaigns. And because uh, the fall fundraising season is so saturated with fundraising campaigns and nonprofits reaching out, um, it's an opportunity for you to stand out um, amongst all of the fundraising activities that happen during the peak um, of the year. So before we get into fundraising types and uh, fundraising ideas, uh, one thing I want you to think about when you start brainstorming of what do you want to do in the summer uh, is what are your goals? I always like to start there because what are you trying to get out of this? Is this that it is a campaign that you want to test out you're interested in doing for Giving Tuesday? You want to promote a program that you have or you want to um, maybe be more active on social media or you want to have you want to increase your donor engagement. You want to see your donors face to face. What are the outcomes that are going to be most meaningful to you and your nonprofit? And that's going to help guide your decision as to what you actually decide to do when it comes to um, a summer fundraising campaign. How much funding is needed for all of the goals that you want to accomplish based off what you've thought through? So again, if this is like a pilot program that you want to test out, what would be the appropriate goal for that? Um, and also you wanna factor in any maybe fundraising gaps from the previous year or the year of that you wanna consider, um, you know, look at your data from the past year. What do you think you need to get by the end of the year? This could be an opportunity to kind of fill that gap. All right, so we're gonna be talking about different types of fundraisers and some of them um, on specifically on Mighty Cause, but it'll really go into also some of the examples I'll provide in fundraising ideas. Um, so the first type of fundraising campaign uh, or fundraiser type is just a general fundraising campaign. So it's typically run by you, the nonprofit. It's a basic fundraiser where you are soliciting donations from your supporters. Um, it's typically has specific focused messaging. So it typically it is for awareness of a program, a service. Maybe it is surrounding a specific day of giving, which again, I'll, I'll talk in a little bit of a, um, in a second. But what's really great about just a simple fundraising campaign is that there's no recruiting or managing of participants. You really set a goal, you can create a page and you can start fundraising around the idea that you've set. So another type of fundraising campaign is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising or are interested in it, um, a peer to peer fundraising involves asking your supporters to fundraise on your nonprofit's behalf. So you are asking your supporters to fundraise for your organization. They are reaching out to their network of people um, to um, donate to your cause. So peer to peer fundraising is really great for engaging your supporters in a new, fun way, in a different way. Um, it's a different ask that you're asking than just. Um, asking for a donation. Um, it also allows for friendly competition. So most commonly, I think one of the most common peer-to-peer -peer examples is a board challenge. Um, but we'll also show you a little bit of how you can include friendly competition with your general community and support network. Um, as I mentioned with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, the whole strategy of it is that your support network is asking their support network to make a donation for your cause. So it is a really great donor acquisition strategy to utilize. Um, it does require, you know, recruitment and for peer-to-peer -peer organizers to participate. 
but we'll also talk about that in a second. I just want to pause. Um, I see it just a question come through. Yes, uh, will the recording be available to participants? Yes, it will be. Um, so there are three types of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns you can think about um, in terms of uh, yeah, when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So one is a general supporter page. So this is the page they're going to utilize to fundraise on behalf of your organization. Um, it's simple and easy to set up um, and they can just share this link with their friends and family and their um, network can then give a gift on their page. The second type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign is a team page. So if you want to create a summer fundraising campaign that is a um, a thon, a, a walk-a-thon, um, a, a run-a-thon, et cetera. Um, so this is a great way to gather people together and have them all fundraise for one cause. So it's your supporters working together to hit a fundraising goal. Um, so they're working as a team. Um, they're also competing as individuals, as you see with the leaderboard in the screenshot. Um, but it's really great for smaller groups that are looking to fundraise together um, and maybe want some of that friendly competition. And then also there is events. So if there's something uh, a larger scale, if you are doing a fun run or maybe you're doing um, a back to school challenge where you're going to have different grades participate, um, this incorporates individual fundraising and groups of people. So you can have different teams all also compete against each other. So just to kind of go through that structure, again, this will come into play as we go through some of the examples that I'll show of different fundraising ideas. Um, so here on um, the left, we have a readathon, um, an event fundraising page. Within that readathon, we have a uh, kindergarten team, so made up of the students within that um, within that grade and then each student has their own fundraising page within that team so that's kind of the the hierarchy or uh, the organization of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and also the event team and individual fundraising so a couple of differences between team and events versus individual fundraising pages so for team and events um, what's nice is that there is a fundraiser template available so you can easily have people create their fundraiser very simply and easily and immediately join their team that they're looking to participate in. Um, there is a join button, as I mentioned, so it's really easy for people to join and also that competitive aspect of the leaderboard and also you can manage all of your participants in one place. With fundraisers, it's customizable for the individuals. There's also a template available for that as well. Um, but if people want to, you know, customize their page, they can. Um, it's standalone. It's not part of a larger campaign. Um, and it's really also a great tool for a crowdfunding um, campaign like a birthday fundraiser or will show like a day of giving. Um, and really, it's the individual only needs to worry about their own page. Um, they're not looking to another team or event fundraising page. Um, All right, so let's get into the meat of why we're all here. So different fundraising ideas for the summer. So uh, when you think about summer fundraising, um, this is your opportunity to get people outside. The weather is getting nicer. Get your supporters outside and engage in fundraising endeavors that will have them outdoors. Um, this is a really great way to have them interact. Um, summer fundraising is really focused on bringing people together, creating camaraderie, and participating in various events. Um, it's a really great interactive opportunity for your organization. Um, and it's also a way to, if you are interested in to, um, utilizing competition, adding incentives, and that is a different way for people to get involved and to be motivated to give and, um, uh, and participate. 
All right, so a couple of different fundraising ideas you can utilize for the summer. So one is a special date fundraiser. So choosing a special date um, that you think really uh, matches your nonprofit, and we'll talk about some of these dates in a second. Um, so this can be awareness months or days that are happening in the summer. This could be a specific, if your organization was founded in during the summer months, it could be a board member's birthday. Um, think about a special date that you can focus your campaign around. Um, and when you have that uh, date in mind, you can really build out your fundraising campaign around that date. And you can utilize that in your communication um, and in your outreach and also the exact, you know, how you wanna implement it. By also surrounding it around a specific day or awareness month, it's also an easy uh, marketing communication tool uh, because you can, include this in your language, in your communication, that you can reach out to local businesses or local media to acknowledge, hey, this is you know XYZ Awareness Month. We're creating this fundraising campaign. Would you be able to promote our fundraising campaign? Um, so a couple of fundraising dates that I've put together that um, you may be helpful for you. But this is just to preface, this is just a couple of days I put together. Um, I provided a link nationaltoday.com. It will provide a list of all of the awareness months and days in June, July, August, and September. So definitely check it out because I, def I did not include all of them. It is a very long list, but just a couple of standout ones. So June being Pride Month and Children's Awareness Month, Global Day of Parents, International Children's Day, Father's Day, Juneteenth, World Refugee Day, and Summer Solstice. Um, and I'll show a couple of examples of how you can incorporate some of these days into a campaign. So July is National Ice Cream Month, Wild for Wildlife Month, Independence Day, World Day for International Justice, South Asian Heritage Month, Parents Day, International Day of Friendship. All right, August, we have Intersectionality Awareness Month, World Indigenous Day, People's Day, um, International Youth Day, World Humanitarian Day, Senior Citizens Day, Women's Equality Day. In September, we have Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, National Suicide Prevention Month, Labor Day, International Day of Charity, World Suicide Prevention Day, Hispanic Heritage Month, International Day of Peace. So again, these are just uh, a couple of days um, or um, months or awareness months to that you can utilize for your fundraising campaigns. So here's an example of our platform of how an organization utilized an awareness month to create a fundraising campaign surrounded around it. So the Auto Inflammatory Alliance created a fundraising page or a surrounding around um, Auto Inflammatory Awareness Month, which is in August. So they had, um, they hosted a lighting ceremony in support of International Auto-Inflammatory Awareness Month. Um, so uh, with this lighting ceremony that they had, as you can see with the photos on the right, they uh, created a fundraising page where people could donate support and then also come to their lighting ceremony on um, August 26. So this is an example again of how you can utilize, this is obviously a very specific <laughs> awareness month, but uh, you can utilize um, different days surrounding it to really promote your campaign. So a couple of other examples that you can utilize um, if you take uh, the, you know, the different days available or National Awareness Months. So National Parents Day, uh, maybe you can create a family-friendly event at your nonprofit. You can give a tour of your office or plan activities for kids and parents at your facilities. National Ice Cream Month, so you can host an ice cream social competition. Maybe you have participants create their own ice cream and attendees donate to vote for their favorite flavor. Uh, Fourth of July and National Grilling Month. Um, 
invite supporters to a 4th of July or July potluck and community barbecue. Um, so you can invite individuals to come and also provide like a donation booth where they can donate or you can have that be a ticketed event that people um, can um, make, a, um, make a, a donation to. International Day of Friendship. Um, you can create a picnic. Uh, so individuals can reserve a spot. I mean, reserve a spot in a public park and you can invite supporters to um, come together and have um, a picnic in the park. Um, and again, you can also encourage giving at that um, space as well. An International Youth Day, you can have a talent show. So create a talent show where attendees also donate to vote uh, and support their favorite acts. So I'm just going to pause there for a second just to see what questions we may have. So um, will we get a copy of the slides? Yes, a copy of the slide deck will be provided in an email afterwards. Um, do you have a recommendation for an affordable peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform? Um, so yeah, maybe because we um, have we offer peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, if you're interested, um, we can uh, you can reach out to us and there will be a survey at the end. You can let us know and we can, um, our team can chat more with you and see what you need and um, how we can be of service. Okay, so I'm just gonna check the chat because I think there are also a couple of questions in. Um, all the organizations that I am with emphasize collaboration and sy synergy to get beyond scarcity and, and separateness. Um, so we seek alternatives to competition almost exclusively, surplus and growth through cooperation or uh, 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 <laughs> co-op-tition. <laughs> We'd love to hear others' idea and share some, how could this happen? Yeah, so um, I think also um, for, and you'll see an example in a second, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising does not have to be competitive. Um, that is one way that can encourage people to um, participate and fundraise is that competition, but it does not have to be competitive. It doesn't have to have that leaderboard part. It can be more of a um, supporting each other and really working towards an overall goal. Um, and also you don't need to have, you know, for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you don't even need to have individual pages for people. Um, in this, let me go back a slide you can just have a standalone fundraising page and it can act as a peer-to-peer -peer where you're encouraging your board members to send to their friends and family, et cetera. Obviously tracking that of how how much people have, um, have, you know, how much fundraising is coming in by, you know, your board or supporters would be a little bit more difficult, but um, it can be just where you have people come to, to one fundraising raising page and it doesn't have that competitive um, aspect. Um, some of the ideas under fundraising data events foster creativity uh, and community for win, win, win. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, and just one comment as well. Does anyone else feel statistics pre-COVID seem slightly inaccurate? So much has changed. It has proven to have really impacted nonprofits. I agree, yes. The statistics, when you're looking at older um, data, it's definitely gonna be different. The statistic I took regarding June was post COVID, or I guess you could say maybe during COVID, it was analyzing, I believe 2021 and 2022. So not completely off base, of, it's not 2017, but that is definitely a good point when you are um, seeing different information to acknowledge um, what was post and pre-COVID. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna continue and we'll answer questions more as we go on. So another fundraising idea when you're thinking of summer fundraising is focusing on a timely program. So um, telling the story of your nonprofit regarding a particular program that you may have. Um, so this also kind of ties in into your checkout flow and um, that donor experience is providing descriptions in terms of what donors are donating for. So 
if you are raising funds for a particular program, um, how much does fifty dollars go towards? Like, what is the impact of fifty dollars or twenty five dollars? And there's a lot of room to be creative in this. So, just a couple of examples. So, um, this is just a standard. Um, this organization, Jakari Kicks for Kids, they ran a program, um, a, a fundraising um, summer fundraising campaign for their summer scholars program. Um, the program offered no cost for um, participating uh, kids to uh, be involved within this camp and this program. Um, so they created a dedicated fundraiser around this specific program within the summer. So another example of using kind of a timely focus is uh, in this example, a back to school challenge. Um, so the Kilgaris project, uh, they actually partner with the Maasai community in um, Kenya and they educate and feed school age children. Uh, so one of the ways that they created a fundraising campaign was using summer and using back to school language within August um, to run that campaign um, to let donors know, hey, we offer, we support students in Kenya um, here's our back to school challenge, support our, our, our kids um, over here so that we can help with the schools um, in Kenya. So this is again, using kind of the timeliness of summer of September to create a fundraising campaign around that. So one of the most common type of fundraising campaigns in the summer are fundraise thons. Um, so on Mighty Cause, we've seen um, a lot of different fundraise thons. So we've seen a write a thon, art a thon, read a thon, dance a thons, any thon you can think of, we have seen it. So the world is your oyster in terms of what type of event like that that you want to do. Um, a thon really gets, you know, participants excited, engaged. It's typically really fun um, and interactive. And also these type of events are also a great opportunity to reach out to sponsors, to reach out to local businesses, um, because they're offer they're are often sometimes willing to provide a prize for winners. Um, uh, so here's an actually an example of um, where this is actually a peer to peer fundraising campaign that was not inherently competitive. Um, so this was a paddle a thon. So uh, hosted by the Ben Carlson Foundation. So the Ben Carlson Foundation was created in honor of Ben Carlson. He was a lifeguard who selflessly sacrificed his life rescuing a swimmer uh, in Newport Beach, California. And this organization was established in his memory and they provide scholarships to student athletes and as well create safety uh, measures to uh, protect lifeguards locally in California and internationally. Um, so every year they run this Ben Did Go event. So it's a paddle a thon where they have a hundred participants uh, do a thirty mile uh, paddle um, across the Catalina Channel, and they encourage participant paddlers to uh, fundraise um, and to fundraise uh, a minimum of fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so it's not a requirement, and they don't have a leaderboard. They really just help facilitate um, people who are participating to create their pages because they want to support the cause. Um, they find it very meaningful. And so here's an example of an individual who created their fundraising page and they shared it with their friends and family. And they were able to use, um, we talked a little bit before about fundraiser templates. So they created a template that they could send to people the paddlers that were participating um, so that they could easily create their fundraising page and again share that with friends and family. So a way for people to participate and not necessarily be inherently competitive. All right, any suggestions as to how to manage contacts generated by summer events? Yes, there are a lot of different um, ways that you can manage contacts. So within Mighty Cause, um, any donations that you receive you are provided a donations report. So all of that information is available to you. Um, you have access to it and you can manage your um, donors there. We also have a CRM system where if you want to add notes to donors, you wanna keep track of 
anything else related to donors, you can also utilize our CRM supporters tool. Um, and as well, we also have um, a native integration with Zapier. So if you do manage contacts in um, another platform or even Google Sheets, um, a lot of nonprofits use Google Sheets to manage their contacts. Um, you can set up an integration really within two seconds where any donation you receive on the platform goes directly into Google Sheets or, you know, Salesforce, uh, HubSpot, whatever that, you know, whatever system that you're utilizing. So there's a lot of different um, ways that you can manage your contacts, but definitely Mighty Cause, it's, it's all available there so you can manage it directly on the platform. All right, another example of a thon um, is uh, Racing for ALS. So Racing for ALS is um, actually a campaign that it raises funds for ALS research um, and they do so through high performance, typically actually driving events. Um, so they actually ran a burpee-a-thon. It was their fourth annual burpee-a-thon last year. Um, and uh, they worked with a local fitness instructor and they hosted their event in a CrossFit gym. Um, and individuals could register themselves or, or be added to a team. And um, what I think is so great and what I've added a screenshot is that you could go in person or you could also zoom in and watch a live feed to encourage um, any friends or family that you had to uh, that were participating um, uh, to motivate them. So they made it a virtual and an in-person event. So I think this is a great example of how, again, you can um, engage your donors and your support network in a different way, um, in a different capacity, and also work with local businesses as well. So another fundraising strategy um, that you can utilize is hosting an event. And we kind of talked about this, um, but there are also a lot of different other types of events that you can host in the summer. Um, so hosting an event brings people together. As I've already mentioned, face-to-face -face interactions with your supporters is going to create a stronger connection and loyalty um, with your organization. They get to see your face. They get to see the people behind the organization and also see the impact that they're making. And hosting an event doesn't have to be costly. You can utilize free resources in your community, and that can be public library, parks, local businesses. It could be virtual to focus on so focus on what you need to execute. Um, events can be ticketed or you can suggest a donation amount. So you can charge a ticketed price to cover any event costs. So if you're offering food, you could offer a ticket to cover those expenses. Or if it's a free event, um, you can also encourage a suggested donation amount for attending. Um, for events also, it's, as I've mentioned, since it's interactive and you're meeting your supporters face-to-face, -face, it's an opportunity to um, encourage giving by having a donation booth and making giving really easy with either text to give or a QR code right at your event. And also um, it's an opportunity to uh, utilize social media, um, build excitement and um, create a hashtag and and um, utilize a social media platform, maybe like TikTok that you haven't used before. Um, so when you're looking to do a live event, um, one thing that you want to want to consider is text to give. Um, so that's something that Mighty Cause offers. And um, what you can do is create a keyword surrounding your event. So in this case, it's furry friends 24. It could be ice cream social 24. Um, and you can associate it to a campaign that you're running. Uh, and then all donors have to do is just text a number, the keyword, and then they get a link to make a donation. So it makes donating really easy. You can have a sign that looks like this where people can easily text this number. Um, again, if people are on their own mobile devices and you want a simple way for people to give and it's a large environment, um, you can create something like this that makes it super easy for people to give. So here's an example of um, an organization that um, also used a specific uh, event 
um, to make a fundraising campaign. Um, so this is Game Day on Game Day Tailgates. So the Tech Museum of Innovation created a Game Day Tailgate campaign. So they invited their supporters uh, to come to their uh, tailgate for the USC Stanford uh, game. Um, they uh, asked for a suggested donation amount of $125. Um, and this is a really great example of how you can create an outdoor, a simple event and surround it with fundraising. So a couple of other events that are really common um, in particular uh, within typically spring or summer is a charity walk. So this is really a mainstay for a reason. It really resonates with a lot of people. It's really accessible um, and it does successfully raise funds. It allows participants to complete their miles on their own time and schedule. Um, as I mentioned, it's really accessible to people of different ability levels. Um, it You can provide a, a prizes or swag bag um, to entice participants to fundraise, um, such as your merch or um, bumper stickers, et cetera. And as we already talked about, it's also an opportunity to promote on social media. So another common um, type of event is a golf tournament or a mini golf tournament. This can be either or. Um, golfers are typically really happy to com compete in nearly any tournament and um, the and the courses are experts at hosting them. So you talk, I would encourage talk to local mini golf um, business or a golf course um, to see if this is a potential partnership. Again, this could be just an opportunity to start that conversation for the future. Um, and you can work with sponsors to create prizes, especially for golf tournaments. Typically, local businesses are really inclined to provide prizes for these type of campaigns. And um, this can be, you know, try a golf tournament and with a local course to see, you know, if this can be something that you add again to your fall or spring campaign. All right, some other event ideas to think about are um, a charity pool party. So you could have invite everyone to a local YMCA or public pool. Uh, again, as I showed with the tailgate, there's a way to uh, enact a an event to a fundraising campaign. So um, you can accept donations in lieu of an entry fee um, and you know partner potentially with local businesses um, for snacks or cold beverages. You can create a pool volleyball tournament. Um, the world is your oyster. Um, so a pet parade, you can organize a pet parade or either a dog walk-a-thon um, and have everyone's furry friends come out with the summer themed con uh, costumes uh, and participate in a fun pet fashion show. Um, again, donors can vote uh, by making a donation to the pet that they love their costume the most. And you can provide prizes for winners like best dressed or cutest pair. A field day. So you can organize a family friendly field day with your staff or volunteers or supporters and have, you know, uh, standard kind of field day games like egg toss, relay race, you can make it a family uh, friendly event. Um, outdoor movie night, bake off, beach tournament, car watch, uh, BYOB happy hour. So in line with kind of like the picnic, you can invite people to um, bring their own um, alcoholic beverages or beverages of their choice. Um, a scavenger hunt outdoor concert. You could invite local bands or uh, a local music shop if they have a student um, student musicians to perform. There's a lot of things that you can do that can be surrounded around a fundraising campaign. So another type of fundraising campaign that is, I think, really uh, beneficial or I can, I think really fun to do is particularly in the summer is a contest. So we've talked a little bit about this already, which is having donors donate or having donors vote with their donation. So each participant can have their own page um, and donors will vote um, and that will decide the winners. This really stokes up friendly competition. Um, and also as I'll show in an example, this can really also be a really great way to engage your community. And it can be really creative and fun. So this is one of my favorite competitions.
competitions <laughs> I've seen on our platform. So this is the uh, Toucan Rescue Ranch. Um, every year they run a virtual art contest. Um, so they have a call to artists. So they invite whoever age wants to participate to um, submit drawings um, surrounding around um, the animals within their rescue ranch. Um, they then, as you see on the right hand side, will post all of the drawings on their fundraising campaign um, and a little bit about the individual who created those campaigns. And then donors can virtually um, look through all of the designs and vote for their favorite one. And then the winner gets their uh, picture printed on a t-shirt that the organization then sells. Um, I love this campaign because I think it's so creative and I think it's a really great way to show that um, peer-to-peer -peer can be really friendly. And also this is a way to encourage people to give. Um, it's a really great prize. Um, people want to see their, their artwork on a t-shirt and being sold. Um, so um, as we talked about, what they did was uh, they displayed all of the uh, artwork on their campaign and then um, individuals could vote through the checkout flow and say which, um, art, which art piece that they wanted to vote for. Um, they divided it into youth and adult categories and they pro provided prizes for first, second, and third. So for the winners, uh, they also provided a, a gift card, the design, as I mentioned, um, uh, the printed artwork, um, a social media shout out. And I think this is also a really great example of how they displayed all of the prizes and incentives in terms of participating. And this also goes for donors too, that they can see, oh, okay, if I vote for this um, art piece, this is what they could potentially receive. All right, I'm going to pause for questions, um, just a second. Um, When do you expect to increase the limit of 250 on your text to give participant option? Um, so that's a good question. So th there is a slight additional cost. I believe you can go over 250 and there may be an additional SMS charge. I will have to double check that. At the current moment, there isn't any, um, we don't have that in the pipeline to increase that amount, um, but as I've mentioned, um, feel free to reach out and talk to us. Our team, um, our fundraising specialist team, they're really good at talking through your fundraising event um, and seeing what is what you will need and what we can provide and see if it will work, if it won't work to see um, how best to manage your event if that's something that you want to utilize. All right, so alternatives to fundraising. So. As I mentioned, um, fundraising summer is typically a wind down for a lot of nonprofits. Um, sometimes they don't really partake in fundraising and that's okay. There's still a lot of things that you can do rather than actively create a fundraising campaign um, because this is your opportunity to really prioritize things that you can't prioritize during busier times of the year like Giving Tuesday. Um, so one is enhancing your donation experience. So look back at the year so far and evaluate how your nonprofit is doing. So look through your donor database, your donor information to see, are you missing any data that you need from your donors? Are you collecting all the data you need during your checkout flow? Are you asking the right questions? So it's really a great time to reflect on your metrics. What's your retention rate so far? What is your average gift size? Because then you can see um, you're pacing toward your end of your goals and what you will need to accomplish in the fall. So second is updating your website. Um, so if your online donation form is too difficult to find, too difficult to navigate, it's not optimized for mobile, you could potentially be losing donors. So take an audit of your website. See, is it optimized for giving? Um, on Mighty Cause, we have an embeddable donation form, an embeddable donation widget that you can easily add to your website to make giving super easy and also include all of any custom questions that you want to include. Like, are you interested in fundraising? Are you, do you want to subscribe to our newsletter, etc. So it's really a time to think through your donation forms, 
um, and making sure it's optimized, especially as we get closer to fall and end of year. It's also an opportunity to nurture donor relationships. So um, take advantage of this time that you have in the summer to establish meaningful relationships with your donors. Um, and this can be really impactful in for end of year or moving forward. So review, how are you segmenting your donors? Are you segmenting your donors? Um, so you wanna think about when you are thinking about segmenting your donors of what is motivating your donors to give? Are they giving because they are uh, supporting a particular program, a certain initiative? Um, how are you showing their impact? Um, how are you thinking and returning donors? Um, so these are all things to consider when you are thinking through your donor relationships and donor engagement. Um, so it's a great time to kind of pick up the phone and call your major donors schedule a call um, after Labor Day. Um, you know, this is your opportunity maybe to send out a newsletter that includes um, information about your programs and initiatives, or send out a short donor, donor survey, survey to get feedback from donors. Um, so this is also a, a great time to prep for Giving Tuesday and your fall communication plan. So after you've kind of gotten some insight into your donor communication preferences, you can use this information to start building out what do you want to say? What do you want your Giving Tuesday or end of your fundraising campaign to be about? So you can take advantage of this slow time to prepare for that content, prepare for what kind of campaign that you want to create. All right, so we are at the end of our webinar. Um, so just a couple of resources that are available to you and then I'll go back into questions. So um, we have a whole support library that breaks down our platform. If you have any technical questions, um, we have all of our past and future webinars available on our site. We have downloadable eBooks and blog articles that also talk a lot about some of the different topics that we've talked about. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Mighty Class, as I mentioned, there will be a survey afterwards that you can let us know that you're interested and our team um, can chat with you and see what are you planning? How can we help? You know, what can what can we offer? Um, is this a, a good fit? So let's jump into questions. All right. Um, I'm going to double check at the chat. Um, can you give examples of successful ways we can encourage our supporters to have their own fundraising events since we are a nonprofit that don't have a physical location? Um, yeah, so your uh, fundraising campaign can be completely virtual. So as I showed with the uh, Toucan Rescue ra uh, Ranch, their virtual uh, drawing contest, um, that was not a a physical location. Um, so it can be a completely virtual campaign. It does not have to have a physical location. But also, as I've mentioned previously, um, even if you don't have a physical location, um, consider also the free resources at your disposal. So you could have a, 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 an event at a local park, uh, your public library, or this could be an opportunity to reach out to local businesses. We talked about National Ice Cream Month, so maybe you can reach out to a, a local ice cream um, ice cream place in your area and see if they're interested in um, collaborating with you. We would like to create a parent campaign to promote a new program and ask our supporters to fundraise it. Also curious, could you cold ask your supporters to fundraise? How do you warm them up to get them involved? That is a really great question. Um, yes, so I think the most important thing is, I this is why I always go back to writing down your goals and understanding your goals and writing them down. Because when you understand the goals for yourself and you can explain it and say it in a sentence, you can then communicate that to your, uh, to your supporters that you're, reaching out to to get involved so let's say it's if we go back to the the back to school challenge and i will just i'll make this up um if we're trying to raise funds we're thinking of doing a back to school challenge um peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign 
um, we're looking to raise money for a specific program or specific cause. We want to um, raise, you know, X amount of dollars so that what? So that we can uh, give a thousand backpacks to students. Uh, the way that we can get a thousand backpacks to students is if we raise X. And the way we can raise X is if we have our supporters um, collectively come together and each raise X amount of dollars. Um, this is also for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. It's also their opportunity to share why they are involved with your organization. So if it's your first time doing a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, I would encourage reaching out to first people that have a direct connection with your nonprofit first. So like your board members, direct volunteers, alumni, people who have received something from your nonprofit, if it's like a grant or um, some, you know, a success story, et cetera, um, because they're going to be able to advocate for your nonprofit. And also they're going to want to tell people, hey, this nonprofit is important for me because of X, Y, and Z. Hey, coworker, hey, colleague, hey, family member, can you make a donation? Because again, we're trying to raise X, Y, and Z to get X, Y, and Z. I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, so how much does it cost to set up um, to use text to give? It is a time limited service. Can you set it up uh, as a text to give keyword in perpetuity? Um, yeah, so there is no limitation for text to give. So once you have that keyword, you can use it however you want. Um, text to give is included in our Accelerate plan. Um, so our Accelerate plan is um, a monthly subscription. It's $119 a month, and it includes all of our uh, Accelerate tools and features. So that includes our integrations, um, our integrations with HubSpot and MailChimp and um, a bunch of other things. So if you're interested in seeing if it makes sense for your nonprofit, let us know and we can talk through and see if, if it makes sense. Um, any suggestions for fundraising ideas more specific to lower income countries where it may be harder for local community to be able to donate? However, there is a big tourist population. How could they be better targeted? Um, I think that's a really good, I think that's a really great question. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I think one way is potentially partnering with local businesses that tourists are typically attracted to. So you could ask to add a, a sign that has the text to give or a QR code um, to make a donation. Um, so I think that's one potential way that you could, if you're looking for tourists in particular, um, people with higher income levels to give um, a way to do that. Um, and I think also maybe potentially reaching out to your local um, tourism agency in your um, uh, city or, or county, et cetera, um, and to see what partnership opportunities maybe there are as well. Uh, fully virtual events in rural areas open the chance for four to six small communities to combine a fundraising initiative toward a common goal, a special bus attendant for five to nine. Um, none of the communities and few families can manage or afford it separately. Um, I think, um, I'm not sure of the question, if you could clarify that. Um, all right, just making sure. Okay, also inquiring, how best um, can one raise or make his fundraising reach the required targeted audience, especially when his or her NGO is not that exposed in terms of reach? Um, so how do you reach kind of like your targeted audience? Um, I think in terms of, so for fundraising, I would say then you want to focus on what your cause is, right? So I think that goes into a, a little bit of a broader question in terms of like, what are you doing marketing wise for SEO? Um, but you wanna focus on what is 
maybe not specifically your mission and your organization name, but what is the cause that you are specifically helping with? Um, and having your organization be included in any informational thing that talks about your specific cause. So whether that's, you know, helping schools internationally, for example. Um, um, okay, I don't see, unless I missed anything. I think that's everything. So um, as I mentioned, I will provide this recording and webinar um, in a follow-up email. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Mighty Cause, please feel free to um, let us know in the survey um, afterwards. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us, support at mightycause.com, and I'll put that email right now in the chat. If you have any direct questions, um, and yeah, thank you so much. I hope this was helpful and insightful um, and uh, I hope you have a great day.